Okay, so I know this is an older video. Uh, this, I, I love it. It's I think it's originally from TikTok. I'm not really sure, but I found this on, on Twitter. And I'll link to this down below. She did an analysis of uh, Padme's jump from Revenge of the, no, from Attack of the Clones. Let me just play a part of it. Let me turn down the sound because I don't want to. Uh, let's see if she shows that. So the part where Padme jumps off a pole right there onto the animal, and then she calculated the force of impact. And I want to repeat that and see if I can get the same number. So I, I watched the video. I didn't really do too much analysis about what other people said. I wanted to start from scratch. I didn't do my own video analysis of the jump. I could have done that. So I'm just going to go with her numbers and see if I can get the same thing. She got a, a massive force, and I want to see how you get that. And I want to kind of do it myself. Okay. With that, let's jump over to the paper. It is a great physics problem. It is. So, I like that. And, and, and you know, one, I love Star Wars. Two, I love physics. And doing analysis of Star Wars with physics, you know I've done a bunch of that. Or if you don't know that, I've done a bunch of that. And so I really am impressed with that. And I enjoy the enthusiasm. Okay. Let's jump over to it. So, back to the paper over here. <laughs> So I kind of drew a picture of what's going on. I didn't put legs on this animal. Uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen Attack of the Clones, I mean, it's okay, but uh, Padme is up here and she's on this, she climbed to the top of this pole and these animals were attacking and there was some type of gladiator fight type thing. Uh, she freed herself from some chain. Uh, Anakin pulled up in this little animal and she jumped down on top of the animal. Let's go. So from the video on Twitter, these are the numbers that she had. She said that the height of the pole, which I'm calling H, well, she said this was three times the height of Obi-Wan, uh, which I think you could probably get a pretty good estimate. They show a picture of that, and you could use video analysis, but I'm just going to go with her value. We can change that later. And then she subtracted the height of this animal, which apparently is called a reek, and I looked it up on Wikipedia. Uh, I don't normally like to look up things like that because I, you know, I like to figure out the numbers myself from the video, but, you know, whatever. So I did that. And they, 2.4 meters seems kind of tall, but okay. I'm going to go with that. Uh, so that's the total distance she dropped. Three Obi-Wans minus one Reek. The mass of Padme, they looked up uh, Natalie Portman. I think she looked up the mass of Natalie Portman, 53.5 kilograms. Apparently, the gravitational field on Geonosis, which is where this takes place, is only 80% of Earth, or which they call standard Star Wars gravity. So, G is just 8.82. Personally, I always use 9.8. I never measured um, different gravitational fields. I think, that came, I think that came from some database where they kind of just estimated for some based on something else. I'm not even really sure what they did that on. But anyway, she calculated an impact force of 14,000 newtons, and she said bones break at 4,000 newtons, which I don't really like that number, but uh, that is not my area of expertise, but we'll talk about that. Okay, now for the physics. She said it's a work energy problem. Boom. That's 100% correct. I'm actually going to draw just the important part. Here's Padme at the beginning, and then here is the point where she contacts the reek, and then the very important thing that she doesn't talk about, some distance, I'll call that S, that she travels uh, during impact. Like there. So this is contact. So this is H. And this is impact distance, which I drew an over-exaggerated S. Okay. Now, the other thing is we have a gravitational force pulling down right here, MG. And then right during this part, there's an upwards pushing impact force, I'll call it Fi, and then the downward gravitational force, Mg. Got it? So work energy principle says that the work is equal to the change in energy. And I know that seems silly, but that's what it says. It also says that the work done by a force is the force dot the displacement, where that's the dot product. And if you want to write this as F, delta r cosine theta a lot of books just do that because they don't want to talk about dot products i'm cool with it either way now what about the energy 
again, a lot of textbooks just say, oh, energy, you just use gravitational potential. But technically, technically, no. You have to say what your system is. So if I say, I'm going to say the system of Padme, no, Padme, plus the planet. It's not Earth, but I almost put, almost put Earth, plus the planet. And if that's the case, then Padme can have kinetic energy. K is one-half mv squared. And Padme plus the, the planet have a gravitational interaction between them. This and this is also pulling on the planet. So we don't have any uh, work done by the gravitational force. It's an internal force. And instead, we'll have a potential energy, mgy. So that's because we included the planet in this part of the system. If you don't do that, then you don't. You don't have that. Now, there, there will be work done on the system, and it's going to be this impact force, right? So this impact force is going to do work on the system over this distance right here. Okay, let's call this position 1, and let's call this position 2, and I'm going to call this down here y equals 0. If I want to use the, the potential energy, I have to pick where y is equal to 0. It doesn't really matter because I'm only dealing with a change in energy, but I do want to pick it. Okay, so let's say the work done by the impact is going to be the change in kinetic plus the change in gravitational potential energy. And I think here also you see a common mistake that books and people make, and they say, oh, the energy before is equal to the energy afterwards. Well, that's not true here because there's work done on the system, and that work is this impact force. Okay, let's jump into it. So first of all, I'm going to write down an expression for the impact force. Uh, it's going to be the, the work done by the impact force. It's going to be the force, F, times the displacement, which is S, and then the angle between them is 180 degrees, and the cosine of 180 is negative 1. So this is taking away energy from the system. So I can say negative F impact S. That's the work done. And this is going to be equal to K2 minus K1, that's a K, K1 plus U2 minus U1. Now, here we have something really nice that makes this such a great work energy problem. What's the speed of Padme at the top? And that would be the dealing with the kinetic energy at the top. The speed at the top is zero. Zero kinetic energy up here. What about down here where she's after she's she stopped? Again, zero. So both of these are zero. Her change in kinetic energy is zero. She starts and finishes at rest. And it gets even better. What's the change in potential here? Well, one of these is zero. Can you guess which one? It's this one, right? Because if I pick y is equal to zero down here, that's zero. Now I can put in my expression for y1. I get negative f i s equals negative m g y1. Well, if that's y equals 0 down here, this is going to be equal to uh, h plus s right there. And I can solve for the impact force right here. Uh, I guess I ran out of paper. That's fine. And I'm going to do my calculations in just a second. Uh, I like to do it this way. First of all, the negative signs cancel, right? So that's good. So I get fs. No, that's f. F I S equals M G H plus S. And I can solve for the impact force. It's going to be M G H plus S over S. And that's it. And remember, we had mass was 53.5 kilograms, G was 8.82. Newtons per kilogram. H was, I didn't calculate that. I'll do that in a second. And then S is the one that we didn't have. We never had S, right? We, she never said that. It, I never saw that she said that. So let's do this. I want to go, I would pick a value for S. And we can, this is the part that you can't really get. You're just going to have to pick it. It has to be something. If S is zero, what happens if S is zero? The impact force is infinity. What happens if S is bigger than uh, H? Well, if that's the case, then the, the impact force is less than her weight. So you can change this whole thing up a bunch by what you pick for the value of S. Okay, I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to 
use her impact force of 14,000, exactly, 432. Uh, H was 1.77 times 3 minus 2.4. And now I'm going to solve for S. And I, I wrote this in a way that wasn't quite great. You could probably just say this is H because S is most likely going to be very small compared to H, but I'm going to, I'm going to solve for it anyway. So I want to solve this for uh, S. So let's, um, let's multiply this back by F. S, F I S is M G H plus M G S. And now I'm going to subtract both sides, M G S from both sides. I get F I S minus M G S equals M G H. And now I'm going to factor out the S. S F I minus M G equals M G H. And now I'm going to divide both sides by that. F S equals M G H over F I minus M G. And the masses don't cancel, right? Um, so there we have that. So what I'm going to do now is put these values in my calculator. I'm going to use Python. Uh, and we'll find how what value of S she had. And then I'm going to go back and pick some reasonable values for S and use this equation to calculate S. So we're going to do both things. You can make a graph of that if you wanted to. I'm just going to calculate it. Okay, Python time. <clears throat> now, I like Python just because it's easy to, it's easy to use as a calculator. Python's right here. Okay, so I'm using WebVPython. <clears throat> Let me just put in my values. I'm going to start off with M is 53.5. You could put units in here. You could put, um, you know, more comments. I'm just going to write it out. H is going to be 3 times 1.77 minus 2.4. So that's 3 Obi-Wans minus 3 in meters. Uh, then I have G as 0.8 times 9.81. <clears throat> I'm just going to recalculate it that way. And then FI is going to be equal to 14432 newtons. And now I can calculate S. S, is that big enough? S is equal to M times G times H divided by FI minus M times G. Print S equals S meters. So she got eight centimeters, 8.7. That seems, that seems like a realistic value, right? I mean, it really depends on how she impacts. How does she land? Um, does she just land on her on her seat, and then her flesh comp compresses and the reek compresses? That's that compression distance. Or does she uh, hit her feet on the side of the reek and they kind of they kind of split out? I don't know, right? But let's calculate uh, this the other way. So I'm going to say F I. Equals one of the nice things in Python. If I I can just rename the reuse the variable, no one cares. Python doesn't care what you do. Uh, M times G times H plus S divided by S. And now I can pick the value of S. So I'm going to say S is equal to um, let's say 20 centimeters. If I do that, I can print this. Fi. Fi. And let's run it. So in that case, I get 6,000 newtons, um, much lower. Uh, I don't know about how to break bones and stuff like that, um, but that I, I would think it depends on the pressure, not the force. But there you go. That's Padme jumping off the thing.